Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial on inter-VLAN routing. So we've been talking about VLANs and trunking and it's important to take a moment to understand exactly how devices in different VLANs communicate with each other. So let's look at a quick example. Here we have two PCs and let's say they are in the same VLAN and that is VLAN number one. So by default the expected behavior is these two PCs can send and receive frames to each other all day long. Right, because we're talking about layer two of the OSI model. So a VLAN is a broadcast domain and you can talk to everybody in your broadcast domain. However, you cannot talk to people outside of your broadcast domain, outside of your VLAN. So at the same time that a VLAN enables you to talk to everybody in it, it also restricts you from talking to anybody outside of it. Well, what if we add a second VLAN? These two PCs are new to the network and we put them in VLAN number two. Well, the same thing applies here. This is a broadcast domain. So these two PCs can send and receive frames all day long to each other and any other device in VLAN two. And they are also restricted to only devices in VLAN 2. So we have these two VLANs, but they can't talk to each other by definition, by, by nature of VLANs themselves. So what, what do we do? How do we overcome this? And this is where inter-VLAN routing comes into play. With inter-VLAN routing, we enable these two VLANs, devices inside them, to break out of their VLAN layer 2 boundary and to talk to other VLANs. And the way we do this is we need to rely on a different layer of the OSI model. We're going to go up one layer to layer three, the networking layer, where we need to introduce a routing device. So we're going to talk about IP and routing. And that's the answer. How do you enable inter-VLAN routing? Quite simply, you need a layer three device, simply a router. Okay, so let's go ahead now and add a router to our network and see how that solves the problem for us. And there it is, there is our router. So because we're talking about routing, layer three of the OSI model, then we're talking about IP addressing. So let's go ahead and introduce some IP addresses. In other words, we're going to associate a particular subnet with VLAN one. So here we're going to use subnet 10.10.10.0 and we'll make that a slash 28. You can see each PC has an IP address and the router is also in this VLAN. VLAN number two is also going to get IP addressing. So we're going to use 10.20.20.0 and we'll make that a slash 28 as well. Clearly big enough to handle all the devices in both VLANs. So the two PCs in VLAN two now have an IP address and the router is in VLAN 2 as well. So here we're talking a little bit about trunking and VLAN ID tagging that we've talked about in some of the other tutorials. You can see this link here is our trunk and it will be servicing uh, frames from both VLAN 1 and from VLAN 2. Make sure to take a look at the other tutorials in this section uh, on trunking and VLAN tagging. Okay, so now to see how a layer three routing device solves our VLAN communication problem, let's just take a look at how a PC routes. So for instance, down here, dot three, this guy wants to send a packet, some information, a frame, over to this guy. Well, the first thing a PC will do is it will ask itself, is the destination in the same subnet that I'm in? Now here the answer is clearly no. And if the answer is no, it's very simple. The computer now says, well, since it's in a different subnet, all I have to do is send this frame, this packet, to my default gateway. So these PCs would be configured to use a default gateway of the router's IP address. So we send the packet to the router. 
Now the router is going to go ahead and take a look at the destination, figure out what's in its route table. It'll see that the destination is connected to it as well. And it will then simply go ahead and send it out over to the destination in VLAN 2. So if you are a little bit uh, hazy on some of the details on how a computer routes, go ahead and take a look at that specific tutorial entitled How a Computer Routes, which is located in the ICND1 material. Okay, so by adding a Layer 3 device, we now rely on IP addresses, and the IP addresses allow us to get out of our Layer 2 VLANs, our Layer 2 broadcast domains, and talk to not only other subnets on our network, but the entire world, because this default gateway is really a door or a gateway to everything else in the world, every other subnet in the world. And it's that simple. That's how we go ahead and implement inter-VLAN routing. Okay, and so to summarize what we covered, we now know that a Layer 3 device is always required when you want to send traffic between two VLANs. Now, a Layer 3 device doesn't necessarily have to be a router. It simply has to have the functionality of a router. So that means that a Layer 3 switch, in other, in other words, a switch that can perform the functions of a router, can also be used here. I'm pointing this out because sometimes people get too focused on the fact that they need a router and then when they see an actual implementation and there's no router involved, then they start to question what they learned. If you come across this, keep in mind that the device that is routing between the VLANs may in fact be a switch and it's a layer 3 switch, meaning it has the routing functionality built inside it. Okay, and so that's it. That is the inter-VLAN routing tutorial. Thanks for watching.